Every day in the United States, our politicians tell us that we must decouple from China. They tell us that China is the greatest threat to the future of America and that moving forward, we need to be more self-reliant. This is about a Communist Party leadership in Xi Jinping that is intent on global hegemony. We will remain focused on the most serious long-term challenge to the international order, and that's posed by the People's Republic of China. We will not be intimidated, and we will not stand down. That's not going to happen on my watch. Everyone, I'm here live at the Las Vegas Convention Center attending the Consumer Electronics Show. CES is one of the biggest electronic shows in the world, and over 150,000 people from around the globe have come to Las Vegas to attend the show this week. There is a lot of buzz and a lot of energy, and incredibly, about a third of the companies attending this show have connections back to mainland China. It makes sense. We're dealing with technology. We're dealing with AI. We are dealing with robots and the future of our world. A lot of it is coming from mainland China. And in today's video, we're going to go behind the scenes, take you around different booths, speak to people about the future of U.S.-China relations and what it really looks like in 2024. Let's start by showing you the incredible size and scale of CES. Nowhere in the planet will you find all of the world's best tech companies gathered under the same roof. The tech on display is simply incredible. Robots, artificial intelligence, the next generation of autonomous vehicles, the future of the world is here, and over 40% of the people attending CES come from outside the United States, meaning this event is a true representation of our global economy. One event that brought a lot of attention was the return of the China Night Forum. No other country in the world was given a dedicated media night, and it's quite simple to to understand why. Of the 4,000 firms attending CES this year, over 1,100 are directly from mainland China. The reality is that China's development in consumer electronics is flourishing, and to better understand China's impact on the U.S. market, I interviewed an outstanding entrepreneur and CEO who has spent the last 20 years building business between the U.S. and China. Well, everybody, I'm joined here by Chris, a fantastic entrepreneur. Chris, you spent pretty much the last two decades between the United States and China doing business. I want to get your perspective on this because every day in America, we hear that we should be actively decoupling from China. That's at least the message that our politicians are preaching to us. But in the real world, when you're dealing with businesses between US and China, what are you seeing in your eyes? Yeah, no, you're exactly right, Tom. Um, my background, I've, I spent, like you mentioned, 20 years uh, roughly in China. Yeah. Uh, my company now, Impact, we specifically help Chinese businesses with their overseas business expansion in a promotion, sales channels, and including in the US. I would actually say, uh, rather than decoupling, uh, what's going to make America great in the future and what made America great in the past is being open to competition, welcoming people from around the world, no matter where you're from, who you are, you get treated equally and fairly in this market. Absolutely. And that's what makes America great. Absolutely. That's why China has grown quickly in the last 30, 40 years too. Yeah. Interestingly. Absolutely. Uh, neither country is perfect. There's, and it's not a completely uh, fair market in either place. Right. Uh, but I do do believe in uh, the the, uh, the power of the free market. Uh, yeah. That. So Absolutely. Uh, to go to your point about decoupling um, and what I see here, uh, at least one quarter, maybe one third of the businesses here at CES are somehow connected to China. Yeah. Uh, either That's from China, motivated and enhanced by China, or in some way doing business with China. Right. China's not going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, I think the question is, is the U.S. going to participate in the international market to, as it should? I think that, that it's a great uh, opportunity for the U.S. to make the world a better place. In some ways, uh, there's a real bit disconnect between the media right. and what's actually happening on the ground these days. Right. There's a, a huge influx of interest and feet feet on the ground from China building new companies here. Right. They're establishing factories in Mexico. Yeah. They're building factories in Europe. Right. They're building, maybe it says made in Mexico these days, but right. it's still a Chinese business person right. creating value for, for their customers overseas. So Absolutely. Uh, I actually don't think there's been a reduction and I think uh, I'm actually very optimistic for the future. It's refreshing to speak to an entrepreneur like Chris. I loved his blunt statement that China isn't going anywhere. Chris confirmed my initial thought that in fact, there is a large disconnect between what media is telling us and what's actually happening in the real world. Let's explore this a little further and see how actual Chinese companies are operating in the US. To understand this question, I decided to visit Alibaba, the most well-known Chinese company inside America. I was fortunate to grab an interview with Ra, a New York City native who works full-time for Alibaba, expanding their operations in the US. So I'm here with Ra, who works for Alibaba for the last year. Ra, very excited to be here at uh, CES this year. And I'm really curious to know more about Alibaba. For example, there's a lot of tension between U.S. and China politically, but how is Alibaba looking at the U.S. market here in 2024? Yeah, the, the U.S. market's a big growth market for us. Yeah. You know, about, about half of our buyers globally 
are in the U.S. And as a result, we're also seeing tremendous growth in small businesses in the U.S. Okay. And what we want to do is make sure that small businesses have access to the client. Yeah, right? yeah. They have access to global suppliers. Yeah. And we also want to make sure that we're erasing that barrier to entry to global trade. Yeah. So yes, we're very bullish on the U.S. market. We have a lot of belief in U.S. small businesses. Small business owners and manufacturers around the world can win by all of us kind of breaking down barriers around the world, yeah. working together. My interview with Ra was so inspiring because one of the quotes I've used for many years is when the US and China work together, the entire world wins. This quote remains the cornerstone of my YouTube channel and is confirmed when you visit an event like CES and see how Chinese and American businesses are coming together and creating win-win solutions. Let's take this one step further. How is Chinese tech directly impacting the lives of the average US consumer? To answer that, I visited the team at Hisense, one of China's most successful tech brands. Well, everyone, I'm here at the Hisense booth. I'm joined by Bruce. And now, Bruce, uh, I'm really excited because this is a very big Chinese brand. And I know that you've been uh, growing your market presence here in the U.S. That's right. What is Hisense looking at? How are you guys looking at the U.S. market in 2024? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for coming. We appreciate you stopping by. Uh, well, so Hisense is the largest television brand in the China market. Yeah. Uh, and we obviously, the U.S. market is one of the largest TV markets in the world. So particularly for large screen TVs, yeah. uh, which we're investing in and developing even bigger, brighter, better TVs right. for the American consumer. Uh, globally, uh, uh, last year, we retained 13.7%. Uh, global market share. Wow. And here in the U.S., we've grown our market share over the last several years to about eight and a half percent market share. Significant growth, and we're looking forward to continuing that growth into 2024. So performance, quality, and value is what Hisense is all about, and we're going to continue to bring that uh, to the American consumer. That's awesome. Bruce, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. You got it. What an amazing insight from Bruce. Performance, quality, and value is what Hisense is focusing on. And it's exactly why so many Chinese companies are breaking into the U.S. market. Walk around this show and it's easy to see that Chinese companies have evolved tremendously over the years. China isn't the same as 40 years ago when Chinese factories produced cheap toys and clothes. Chinese companies now have some of the most innovative factories in the world. Now, one of the best ways that we can improve the U.S.-China relationship is certainly having more people go to China and experience yourself. A lot of times people ask me, Cyrus, you've lived in China for 10 years. What's it like? And you know what my response is? I say, I tell you, but you probably won't believe it. The China that you actually experience is very different than what's presented in our Western media. But let's say that you don't have the opportunity to go to China. You can come to a trade show like this and immediately you're gonna have a much better understanding of how this world economy works and how connected our own American economy is to the Middle Kingdom. Now, I think a lot of the US-China relationship can improve if we just have better communication. And now I'm gonna take you to one of my favorite companies here at CES. It's a company called Time Kettle that uses AI to help improve translation and speech. Let's go check them out. I first visited Time Kettle two years ago, and it's been incredible to see this company's progress each year. They first started attending CES with a small booth that has now grown into one of the larger and certainly more popular booths, as it was consistently filled with visitors every single day of the show. Time Kettle debuted a new product this year called the X1 Interpreter Hub, a standalone device that includes translator earbuds and is suitable for multilingual, simultaneous communication. From business meetings to social gatherings, Time Kettle X1 caters to all needs, redefining cross-language communication experiences. So what's the X1 Interpreter Hub? And most importantly, does it really work? In total, there are five different ways you can use this device, and we'll start with the listen and play mode. This mode is designed for international meetings where you may be the only one who doesn't speak the language. Swipe to this mode, wear the earbuds, and you'll continuously hear the AI interpretation. You can also join the discussion anytime just press the button to translate and broadcast. The next feature is ask and go. Imagine traveling to a foreign country and needing an instant translation on the spot. You simply click this button, select the two languages, hold this button, and ask your question. Hello, where's the closest restroom? The next feature is voice call, which is pretty amazing. Two people, both having an X1 hub, can use this device as a phone and call each other directly. Each X1 hub has its own six-digit number that serves as a phone number between devices. In this example, I'm speaking English and receiving a phone call in Chinese all through this device. I simply remove the earbuds and start chatting. 
Another advanced feature is multi-person, which is pretty remarkable. Imagine being in a business meeting with several different languages being spoken. Everyone can set their preferred language setting and all the devices link up and provide simultaneous translations for each person in their preferred language for the meeting. But the most important feature and the one you'll likely use the most is the one-on-one -on -one mode. It's time for the moment of truth and to see how this device really works in real time. Well, everyone, it's time to put the X1 Interpreter Hub to the test. I'm here with Lynn from Time Kettle. Lynn, it's so good to see you again. Yes, nice to see you. Absolutely. This is my favorite company here at CES. And Lynn, let's do it. So Lynn and I both speak English and Chinese, so I'm going to switch things up. I'm going to speak a little Japanese to Lynn. Let's see if we can actually have a real conversation using the AI translation. Nice. Well, everyone, that is the X1 Interpreter Hub from Time Kettle. So excited. Lynn, thank you so much for having me so much back here at uh, CES 2 2024. All right, everybody, let's continue our video. What an amazing experience at the Time Kettle booth. I absolutely love this company and love their commitment to improving the world through better communication. As I walked around the CES show for three days, I couldn't help but feel inspired for a better future ahead. If there was one thing I want you to remember from today's video, it's that there is a large disconnect from what you hear about China in our media and what China is really like in the real world. China isn't going anywhere. The country is a force for positive change in the world, and true American patriots who understand that our country was built on welcoming the brightest minds from around the globe remain open for business and welcome these innovative Chinese companies. Well, everyone, that wraps up our experience here at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, and it's been an absolutely phenomenal few days, really connecting with a lot of amazing entrepreneurs, people in the consumer tech industry. And again, I want you to understand this message is that when the United States and China work together, the world wins. And this is no better illustrated than coming to a consumer electronics show. The best technology in the world is coming from Asia. The 21st century is Asia century. And this is why so many people from around the globe are coming here and why so many countries, but definitely China with the second largest economy in the world has its handprint and footprint everywhere it's incredible to see and again if you really want to understand china and just how our economies are connected come to a consumer show like this you'll get to meet with amazing chinese people you'll also get to see that china really does contribute a lot to the american economy and this is what we heard from alibaba you know our goal is to help small businesses in the united states small business owners like myself we are what drive the united states economy but we need partners from china we need partners from all over the world that's what it means to be living in a global economy. And I also want to thank Time Kettle for sponsoring today's video. It was so much fun to catch up with the team, see their AI translation software in real time, experience it. This is the third consecutive year that I've seen Time Kettle here at CES, and every year it gets bigger and better. And again, I'm just so optimistic about the future. Everyone, if this is your first video of mine that you're watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what tech was most inspiring to you and I look forward to seeing you all in our next video soon.